Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about something I became very, very passionate about when I moved to Las Vegas, and that's golf courses. And not passionate for a good reason. I hate them. So we're gonna be talking about the environmental impact of golf courses across the board from biodiversity, water usage, land usage, and so forth. So I always just thought they destroyed wildlife. And then I moved here to Las Vegas, the desert, if you didn't know, Las Vegas is in the middle of the Mojave Desert. I'll insert a map. Grass is not a native plant here. If you didn't know, grass does not grow in the desert naturally, meaning it takes an abundance of water to water this grass. So that's why I really grew to hate golf courses when I moved here was because they use so much water. Anyway, before we dive in too deep, I just wanted to say publicly, thank you guys so much. I haven't said a public thank you in a long time, probably since like 2000 subscribers, which is insane that at the time that I'm filming this, we are approaching 10,000. I can't believe it. So I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed, everyone who likes, everyone who comments, everyone who shares, everyone even who just watches, even if you don't do any of that stuff. I really appreciate you guys. And if you're new here, I would really appreciate if you hit subscribe as well. I talk about all sorts of things zero waste here on this channel, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste, as well as practical ways to be an activist. So if you're interested in any of that, definitely hit subscribe the bell for post notifications and don't forget to follow me on my other platforms as well. I'm pretty active on TikTok and Instagram. I also have a Facebook community. It's always linked in the description where I post links to my videos and you guys can share your zero waste swaps as well if you want to join that group. Um, and then I do Twitter sort of. That's on my social medias, but I just wanted to say thank you guys. Let's first talk about golf courses and biodiversity. If you're first hearing the term biodiversity, I recommend you check out my full biodiversity mini series. It'll be linked above and below. This winter slash spring, I dove deep into what is biodiversity, how humans are killing biodiversity, and how saving biodiversity is one of the best things we can do collectively for the planet. So go check that out. So the golf courses tie into how humans are destroying biodiversity. Now think of a golf course, wide open spaces of just grass, maybe a few trees and bushes here and there, but acres and acres of nothing but mowed, watered, and fertilized grass. The average golf course takes up about 150 acres of land, two thirds of which is maintained grass. First off, it has to be watered. Most golf courses still use water even if they do live in a rain heavy area. It has to be mowed, which is a lot, a lot of gas. And then they also have to be maintained, meaning they don't wanna have weeds and they don't wanna have pests. So they probably use pesticide and fertilizer on all of this grass as well. So each golf course takes up about 117 football fields just for the grass. So this is nothing but limiting to local biodiversity. And, and you know, if, if you've ever been to a golf course, there are sections where there are trees and there's still some local wildlife, but it's very small. Like imagine that entire area, all 117 of those football fields worth of area used to be covered in that native, native plants, native trees, but now it's just little chunks here and there. The rest is just grass. And like I mentioned with the desert, in some areas, grass isn't even a native plant, meaning it is literally an invasive species competing with the natural wildlife. But this is pretty nuanced as well. Golf courses can actually be a benefit to biodiversity in some cases, definitely not in the desert. And even in places like the rural Midwest, that's just destroying biodiversity. What I mean is in urban areas. Now, you're not gonna have a golf course smack in the middle of New York City, but like in suburbs and other things like that, golf courses can be a benefit because it does add more green space to those otherwise not green areas. So I'm not saying they're entirely bad for biodiversity, but most of the time. So I think a small number of golf courses have the potential to do good when managed properly and not in excess. Now let's talk water water usage and golf courses. Here's the thing about water, if you didn't know, it's actually a finite resource, clean water that is. I'm sure we all know the earth is composed of like two thirds water approximately, but not all of that is drinkable. So this is where it comes in. I don't really see that big of an issue with golf courses in areas where it rains. Like I did not have any problem with golf courses when I lived in Ohio because Ohio has plenty of space and it rains frequently. So there was not much of an issue. But when I moved to Okinawa, there's very limited space on that island and there were several golf courses on that island. And then I moved here. There's still plenty of space in Nevada. If you've ever been out west, it's so spacious. But water, water is the main issue out here. Because in areas where it rains, that means that golf courses aren't using our precious drinking water to water grass. As I mentioned, I've always just kind of hated golf courses in the back of my head, like I don't see the point. But when we moved to Las Vegas, that hatred really flourished. Mostly just because when we moved into our house, our plants were dead after not being watered for a few weeks. Right upon moving to the city, we were hit with heavy water restrictions for the, for the citizens. I just thought, you know, like, oh, water restrictions are part of desert life. Everyone's gonna have like deadish grass and scraggly plants in their front yard. That was until I drove past some golf courses. 
that were bright green. They had no issues. So that got me thinking, like, how in the world is that so green? How much water are they using to keep grass that green out in the desert in the summer? So if you didn't know, in the summer in Las Vegas, it's easily like over 100 and 110 every day, meaning plants literally just get crispy from the sun. And so I'm like, wait, why are we under watering restrictions? and these golf courses don't seem to be. First, let's talk about how much water a golf course uses. Audubon International estimates that the average American golf course uses 312,000 gallons of water per day. But in desert places, they estimate a golf course can use up to a million gallons of water per day. So that being said, each golf course in the Palm Springs area consumes as much water as an American family of four uses in four years, each day. This, this is why I hate golf courses, especially in the desert. Now let's dive into Las Vegas. From manually counting, I found approximately 57 golf courses in Las Vegas alone. And Las Vegas sits in Clark County, and this website says that Clark County has 81 golf courses. I don't even understand why. That is way too many. There's no way they're each. I feel like not that many people play golf a day, but I mean, I could be wrong. A lot of people do retire here, I guess. So let's just be generous and say these 81 golf courses use 500,000 gallons of water per day. That would be 40 to 41 million gallons of water per day in Clark County for golf. I was having a good day and I made myself angry. So why is this a problem? If you're still to this point and you're like, 40 million gallons of water a day just for golf? That's not bad, what's the problem here? Let's dive a little bit deeper into the drought issue that the United States is facing right now. So I'm gonna be making a more in-depth video about this, about Lake Mead, how fast it's drying up and what happens when it does dry up. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned because it does not just affect those living in Las Vegas or the Southwest. It will affect everyone in the United States. But ultimately we're at like year 22 on this drought. Citizens are underwater restrictions. Lake Mead, our sole reservoir, drops about 1,000 Olympic sized swimming pool every day. So we're in a severe drought right now. Our precious water is likely to run out if we don't take drastic measures. And I don't see cutting out golf as a drastic measure. There are already city cuts on ornamental grass on days we're allowed to water, on during hours of the day that we're allowed to water. But I still don't see golf courses getting these cuts. If I'm wrong, please let me know down below. I will be very happy if golf courses are facing cuts, but it doesn't look like it. So what are some solutions? to the water crisis and how can we stop golf courses? Can we cancel golf courses already? I I think the easiest solution for golf courses themselves is AstroTurf. This is a little controversial and I don't think AstroTurf is the best solution for every golf course, but golf courses in the desert, I do think it's the best solution. And here's why. If you've never heard of AstroTurf, it's, it's a plastic based fake grass and that's why it's iffy. It is plastic based. So I don't think it should replace all grass. Like I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna put AstroTurf in my front yard and golf courses in places where it rains, they shouldn't use AstroTurf, but you really do have to pick and choose your battles. And right now the desert, we're facing a huge drought. So I think dealing with a little bit of plastic is preferable than running out of water, personally. So a lot of benefits here. This fake grass, once it's, once it's installed, it does not need watered, it does not need mowed, it does not need fertilized, anything. You just let it go. So this will reduce chemicals being leached into our fresh water and gasoline burned with all these lawnmowers. And I can see a lot of people being like, well, that's gotta cost a lot of money. And yeah, it does up front, but let me tell you how quickly it pays itself off. Artificial grass typically costs $5.50 up to $18.75 per square foot for an average price of $12.33 per square foot. With a normal size golf course ranging from about 4,500 to 6,500 square feet, that puts the average cost of laying turf at just $55,000 to $80,000. Like I said, it is a bit of a hefty upfront cost, but what's the cost of water? Depending on how much water you use for the golf course, an average golf course can spend anywhere from $7,000 to $108,000 per year on water alone. And since we're in the desert, I guarantee that water price is on the high end. So laying AstroTurf will pay itself off in just one year in water alone, that's not even including all the other maintenance for the grass. Another solution is just taxing water usage, kind of like we're facing as citizens. For example, if we're caught like watering during midday, we can literally get a ticket. Now I'm sure golf courses do have some of this. They're probably heavily taxed because they do use a million gallons of water per day, but that's still obviously not an incentive enough for golf courses to lay AstroTurf or to just close. And I get it, it's a business. I don't want people to go out of business. I don't want people to lose their jobs, but we're gonna run out of water. <laughs> This is an emergency. And I think there should also be a restriction on building new golf courses. There are already 81 in Clark County, 57 in Las Vegas. I don't think we need any more. And of course, as individuals, we can do our part by writing our local governments, telling them, hey, I'm being taxed. I'm being monitored for my water usage. Why aren't the golf courses? They should be. Emailing the golf courses themselves, telling them, 
look, this is how much money you can save by laying AstroTurf instead of spending money on water and so forth. And of course, limiting our own water usage as well, just because everyone does need to do their part to keep water usage is down out here. And it's everything as simple as like taking one minute shorter shower, not going to the car wash every single week and so forth. So let me know down below what other solutions you think could be implemented for golf courses and individuals down below. Would you like to say hi? Good girl. So I already briefly touched on letter writing. So let's talk more about that just for a minute. This year for Plastic Free July, I spent the entire month writing letters. I was in the middle of moving from Japan to Las Vegas, so it was really, really hard for me to focus on reducing my waste to completely zero because I had to travel. I had to buy some snacks and plastic. I was staying in a hotel at one point and couldn't help the plastic waste there. You get the idea. So I wanted to challenge myself in a different way by writing letters. There are a few days where I was just copy pasting the same email to golf courses. I think I did like 10 to 15 golf courses asking them simple questions. Hey, how much water do you use? What are you going to do moving forward with this extreme drought and the water restrictions we're under now and so forth. And I didn't hear back from any of them. So moving forward personally, I want to email more golf courses. Like I said, still with the same stuff, asking them what they're going to do, but also saying pitching that idea of AstroTurf to them and telling them how much money they can save by using turf. So I encourage you to do the same thing, especially if you live out here, Nevada, Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, please. <laughs> and then email your governments as well, asking them to put restrictions on the golf courses as well, instead of putting restrictions on citizens and farmers. So if you'd like more tips on letter writing, be sure to check out this video up here. I just put it out a few weeks ago. 20-ish tips on letter writing for beginners, but even if you already have written letters to your government before, you might find some tips in there that you haven't heard of yet. I think letter writing is, and calling, if you prefer calling, um, I like to write, I am an introvert. I think that is one of the best things that we can do as individuals for the planet, as well as just for like social good. So if you're interested in that and you've never started, just do it, just get over your fears. I used to be the same way and go check out those tips. And if you're looking to help, I know a lot of people are like, how can I help? How can I be an activist from home? I don't wanna to go to rallies. Write and call your government and wasteful businesses and to share videos like this one to educate others. I'm pretty sure that everyone watching this video, we're all on the same page about our love for the planet and our hatred for golf courses, but maybe like our parents aren't, our siblings, our coworkers. So I encourage you to share this video with others to spread the word, let's cancel golf, okay? <laughs> but that is all that I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I really appreciate your time. Stay tuned because I have a few more videos planned about talking about the drought in the Southwest and, um, and other stuff like that, if you're interested in that. I don't know if it's interesting or sad. Again, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit subscribe. If you made it to this point, don't forget to hit like, and let me know other sort of videos you'd like to see down below. But until next time, remember that your small actions have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys.